So understanding of the different types of kinematic pairs or different types of connections which we can have between the links is a very important concept in kinematics. So let us understand the different types of kinematic pairs. So broadly they are classified into two areas. So one is higher pairs and one is lower pairs. And this classification is based on the nature of contact between the two links. So if we are having a line to line contact or line to surface contact between two links, then it is called as a higher pair. So if we take the example of two gears, which are meshing with each other. So the teeth of the gears will have a line to line contact ideally. Ideally in design, the two gears teeth will have line to line contact between them. They will not have full complete surface contact. So the contact between the teeth in an ideal case in the design case will be line to line contact. Same is the case with this cam and follower assembly. So this is a cam which is having an irregular shape at its outer uh, perimeter and basically that shape will produce the motion of this follower. So this follower has a wheel, a roller follower. This is a roller. So this will go up and down based on the profile of this cam. So the contact between this red color roller and the gray color cam is a line to line contact. And the same case is for wheels which are running on ground. So wheels which are rotating on the ground, which are rolling on the ground will have a line to line contact. The outer periphery of the wheel will have line to line contact with the ground. So this is called as the higher pairs. And then there are lower pairs which are having surface to surface contact between the two members. So the two links which are connected by the kinematic pair will have surface to surface contact between the two members. Now let's have a look at the different types of lower pairs which are used in machine design. So there is a prismatic pair, there is a screw pair, planar pair, revolute pair, cylindrical pair and spherical pair. So all of these are different types of lower pairs in which there is surface to surface contact between the two links. So if you consider the yellow link and the red link between the two links, there is surface to surface contact. Always there is surface to surface contact, unlike the higher pairs where there is line to surface or line to line contact. So the machine parts like hinge joints, bearings, linear bearings, ball joints, all of these come under lower pairs. So we'll understand in detail what are the degrees of freedom which are constrained and which are free for different types of lower pairs. So these are the degrees of freedom which are allowed for the lower pairs. So if you are connecting the link one which is in yellow and, and link two which is in red, in the case of prismatic pair, there is only one relative motion which is allowed that is the movement in the direction of the arrow that is prismatic movement of the yellow part with respect to the red part so this is called as a prismatic pair in the screw pair there is a screw which goes in into the internal thread of a block so when there is a rotation of the screw the block will move so there is a relative motion between the screw and a block in only one direction that is the movement of the block in this arrow direction so that is the degrees of freedom is one so we are talking about relative degrees of freedom. That is the degree of freedom of the block relative to the screw. Although we can see that the screw is rotating and the block is moving, both are moving. But in terms of in relative to the screw, the block is moving. Relative to the block, the screw is rotating. So the relative degree of freedom is only one. Then there is a cylindrical pair. So cylindrical pair is one in which there is a rotation about the axis and also movement in the arrow direction shown over here. So there are two degrees of freedom. So this movement and also rotation. So then there is a planar pair which has three degrees of freedom. So if you're having a block and if you're keeping it on flat ground, it will have three degrees of freedom. It can rotate about the direction shown over here in yellow arrow. It can rotate about the Z axis if you're considering the axis over here as vertical. And then it can move in X axis and Y axis. So three degrees of freedom are allowed in this planar pair of this part, the yellow part with respect to the red part. Then there is a revolute joint. So revolute joint will allow relative rotation between one part to the other as shown over here. So only one degree of freedom is allowed. This is a hinge joint or a knuckle joint, which is very common in machine components. So then there is a spherical pair. So spherical pair will have an internal sphere and an external sphere. And the relative motion which is allowed is only rotation about all the three axes. So this, if you consider it as a ball, this ball can rotate about Z axis. In this way, it can rotate about X axis, it can rotate about Y axis, but it cannot move in X, Y or Z axis. So all the three degrees of freedom in rotation are allowed. All the three degrees of freedom in translation are constrained. So this is a spherical pair. 
which is used very commonly in ball joints in suspension components on vehicles.